think well, we should say that tribal art is fascinating, is a very important field of, the, uh, of art, art history, uh, but it's also a very complex and, and specific field. Uh, it's important, first of all, because it's, uh, it shows, it reveals the, the beliefs, the, um, the values and the, the aesthetic conceptions about of, from thousands of thousands of uh, cultures from four continents, which is to say almost all over the world. Uh, it's also uh, important because it has been absolutely crucial in, uh, for the creation of Western modernity in, in art. There's no need well, to recall how uh, the, the, in, the, the artists from the avant-garde had a very major impact when they discovered these artworks. With all these artists uh, starting to collect and starting to buy and claiming for um, awareness of this uh, kind of object, uh, we came to maybe the third reason why this field is so, uh, so amazing and so important, that all this uh, movement of recognition uh, permitted to create a very strong um, and dynamic art market. If we look at the profiles of our most important collectors, they, they do come from all over the place. I think one difference that uh, I've noticed is that they're not, as they were in the past, part of the community. Today, very often the, the big collectors are rather isolated. They, they, they each operate in their own uh, little world. And I think that's probably a function of modern communication. They're able to access information through the internet, through uh, you know, many public sources and so on, in a way they weren't before. Cyberarts, in terms of the mar art markets, still being a, a, an niche field within the global context. What we need to keep in mind is that it's a complex uh, complex field. First of all, because it's an under construction, if I may use the expression, field, uh, there is a huge lack of information uh, about, also, about things that are essential to our understanding, Western understanding of, of art. It's also uh, difficult to know the real meaning of the objects, and it is, of, of course, due to the simple fact that we're facing tradition, uh, cultures that did never written their history, so we have no written references. There are significant differences between our markets and other established art markets. And one point that I would bring out is that the, you mentioned that there's a lack of information, uh, but what we have in contrast is a growing consensus. So if you want to establish a painting or a sculpture in Western art, uh, typically you, you do that by reference perhaps directly to the artist, if the artist is still alive, to the artist's estate or, or heirs if the artist is no longer alive. And you cross-reference uh, these statements and information uh, with written sources. Now, as you pointed out, of course, in Africa we often don't have them. Uh, what we do have sometimes is provenance. In other words, we know the date which something was collected, and that's the starting point. Those objects then start, once they are in Western hands, if you like, or collector's hands, or museum hands, they start to circulate and to accumulate uh, a history. And that history in time forms a consensus, and those objects become, uh, in some way, iconic. Um, now this process, of course, has accelerated and developed, uh, as you say, in the last 20 years. Magazines like yours have been very instrumental in that, in the sense that they regularly publish works that were not previously known. Today, people who have very little knowledge of the field can have access to it, uh, but it could be that there's, this, you might say, some laziness could creep in where people uh, don't bother to develop the knowledge. I certainly think the future is quite rosy. Uh, I think the tribal art is broken out of uh, what you might call the ghetto, which I guess is an appropriate choice of words. Um, 
one aspect which is very interesting. A friend of mine who's not a tribal art collector, but is a very shrewd analyst and a big collector in other fields, he believes, and I think there is evidence to support it, that ultimately, when institutions and um, economies of sub-Saharan Africa catch up with Western models and standards of uh, governance, that we will start to see a movement to repatriation. I mean, there is a political movement to repatriation, repatriation, but it's not supported. Nobody's, as yeah. it were, putting their money where their mouth is. But in time, that may happen. And in fact, there is one, one prominent collector who's, uh, who's made it his mission to repatriate things to Angola. Um, now, I wouldn't say that's had a market effect as of yet, but I believe it will have a market effect in time.